Hey everybody, what's up? Welcome back to another vid. This is episode two of An Idiot's Guide to the Line 6 Helix, and you're here with the kid, Jeremy Vareo. If you're on the music forums, I go by Jer Evil. And today, we're gonna drink a little bit of coffee, and we're gonna look at the anatomy of a Line 6 Helix. Also, I guess if you're from the UK, I apologize, because this means something bad over there. Here, it just means two. Anyway, stick around. All right guys, welcome to video two. Like I said, this is the anatomy of a helix. I feel like this might be singularly the most important video in this series, right? I am a firm believer if you have a piece of hardware, whether it's a modeler or text pedals, whatever it is, learn how to use it. There's a lot of buttons and switches and knobs and control things on the surface of this unit. By the end of this video, you will know what they all do at a functional level. You can see that the uh, computer editor HX Edit is up on my secondary screen. It's a great editor, but for most things, it's not necessary. You have to use it if you're gonna load IRs, you have to use it if you're gonna load presets. But for right now, for the first few videos, we're gonna do everything on the unit so that you know how to control it when you're at a gig and something goes wrong and you've gotta make an adjustment. Because guess what? You're a musician, which means you either A, didn't bring your laptop, B, brought it but didn't charge it, or C, brought it, charged it, but didn't bring a USB cable. Mm-hmm. Okay, so let's look at the basic overall anatomy of the helix. Over here, you've got your preset knob, which can be rotated, turned left to right, and push in to make a selection. You've got your save button that you'll use when you're saving presets. Once you push it, it brings up options that go over these six control knobs. The control knobs can also be turned left and right and pushed in to make a selection. You have your home knob, which you'll use anytime you want to get out of the current screen you're on. It takes you back to this setting on your main display. You've got this button with the three lines, that's your globals button, and when we get into the next video for global settings, we'll use control knob number six to adjust those. Then you've also got this button here, which is your amp cab button. Whenever you're working in something, and say you're adjusting your reverb, if you click that button, it takes you back to your amp and cab settings, which can then be controlled by control knobs one through six. Over here, you've got your bypass button. That does exactly what it says. If you're on an effect, you bypass it, get it again to turn it back on. The action button allows you to do four different things. You can copy, paste, clear, or clear all. So if we want to copy a block, say this overdrive, we'll put it down, and then we put it on this parallel path here. Hit action again. You can paste it. We don't really want that, so we're going to clear it, and then hit our home button. This joystick is much like the joystick on a PlayStation or Xbox controller. You can use it to go down, up, left, and right through various blocks on your signal chain. You can turn it left and right to change out the type of effect that you're using on that block, right? So on your distortions, you can go from your RAT to, uh, you know, a TS-808, and it can be pushed in as well for further selection. The page buttons here allow you to toggle left and right between parameter settings that are on the main display. You'll know that there are additional things to adjust because you'll see these red lights here. This means there's two pages. You can see on the distortion, those lights aren't there, meaning there's no additional page to go left or right on. This volume button is your overall output volume for your Helix. This headphones knob that is only on the floor model and the rack, not on the LT, controls your headphone input. You've got your expression pedal, and you've got two rows of six capacitive foot switches. What capacitive means is if you lightly press and hold them with your finger or your toe, different options will come up. You've got an LED ring around each foot switch that can be changed and customized. You've got this tap tempo button here that you can use to obviously tap your tempo and this red ring will flash indicating what that tempo is. I use it a lot for when I'm counting in on songs. You can also turn that off because some people find it distracting. If you push and hold the button, your tuner comes up. Push it again, goes away. This mode button, if you push it, it'll take you from here where it's set kind of on effects. Push it again, goes back to your presets. That's all something that we can set up. We've got bank buttons that can be set to go bank up or down. It can also be set for presets or snapshots. So, painless, right? You guys have an overview of all the knobs and switches. You know what the buttons do. You know which things to press. You know which things to turn. Now we can start getting into some other cool stuff. So, let's head over to video number three. We're gonna take a look at some basic global settings and then we're gonna get on to patch creation in video number four. Thanks for sticking around.